So I'm sure you've heard about AI agents a lot lately, but have you used one yet? Or what exactly is an AI agent? Now, in my opinion, the best way is to try one for yourself. With the recent release of Cloud 3.7 Sonnet and the agent mode in the cursor tool, you can now build with AI agents even if you have zero coding experience. In this video, I'll show you why Cloud 3.7 is a game changer and walk you through three simple free examples you can implement immediately. And there's no coding knowledge required and it could possibly save you thousands of dollars in a few minutes. Let's dive in. All right, Cloud 3.7. I know this one has been around for a while. What is new about the 3.7 model over the previous 3.5 model? Which is interesting how these different companies are advancing the model versions, sometimes by one, sometimes by 0.2. So Cloud 3.7 Sonnet shows particularly strong improvements in coding and front-end web development. And potentially we can try it out with some simple front-end interactive small web apps. And here you can see that Cloud 3.7 in terms of accuracy is almost 20% higher over Cloud 3.5, which is crazy. And its agentic tool use is also better than Cloud 3.5 and OpenAI's O1 model. And in this graph, they're talking about how in 2024, which is like 100 years ago, cloud helps individuals do their current work better, making each person the best version of themselves. So it was an assistant. Now in 2025, cloud can be an independent collaborator for you on par with experts expanding what every person or team is capable of. So. Essentially, what this is talking about is now we're in the era of AI agents. And then we're also looking at 2027 cloud pioneers. Cloud finds breakthrough solutions to challenging problems that would have taken teams years to achieve. So this is like an approximate of pseudo AGI, perhaps. Not sure if 2027 is the year to achieve that. But given that 2024 already sounds like 100 years ago, 2027 could be something I cannot predict. All right, with all these interesting things going on, I know like with AI agents, and we're gonna try the Cloud 3.7 with Cursor AI. And if you have not used Cursor before, you just have to go to cursor.com and download this software into your local computer. And the reason why we're not directly using Cloud to test its coding capabilities is because Cursor is just so much simpler. And you see it significantly shortens your time of developing a prototype. Okay, so if it's your first time using Cursor, I'd recommend you start from the free plan because it comes with a free pro two week trial. So you can really get a taste of its capabilities before you decide if you want to upgrade to the pro level or not. After you download it cursor and open it, you need to specify a project folder. You can either create a new one or select an existing one. Okay, when you open cursor, you wanna make sure you have downloaded the most updated version so that you can use the agent function. And so it usually will give you a node like right here a little tab to ask you to update cursor. So you can just click on it. And also right now, uh, I want to have the terminal window open up. So I'm gonna go to view tab and click on terminal, right? And right here is the chat window. And you see that you can select the models you want to use. And for now, in 2025, you absolutely want to select Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. And under here, you have three options here. Number one is agent, and this is the most state-of-the-art model where it takes on a complete project on its own and runs the codes on itself with little to no need of supervision or prompting in the process. And it comes with some risk for sure, but it gives you a feeling like you've hired a very independent coder who can think about problem solving challenges on his own and make decisions accordingly. The ask model is just like a chat box where you feel like you're just talking using the cloud 
interface or chat GPT. And the edit mode is the most interactive one where you can give a prompt and it will write some code and you can intervene and give the model more instructions and modify that. And this is most helpful if you have certain baseline level of understanding of coding. And for beginners, I highly recommend you start testing with the agent model. Just imagine that you are a boss and you want to build an app or a website. You may not have a lot of coding knowledge, but you have a great vision of what you want this website or app to include. And then you want to write that down in detail and hand that to your software engineer agent here, which is Cursor plus Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to test is to see if the Cursor AI agent using Cloud 3.7 can help me replicate an existing website just with a screenshot. So naturally, I'm on airbnb.com and I'm going to take a screenshot. Then I'm going to go to cursor in agent. I'm going to put the picture here and I'm just going to say, please replicate this interface and substitute any images was open source image links. And just like that, uh, one sentence. And also make sure you have selected Cloud 3.7 Sonnet and send. With, let's say with this just one sentence prompt, what this agent can do for us. Okay, it's getting to work and I'm not doing any coding at all right now. And the model is responding with what it is thinking about how to execute this project. And it recognized that this is an Airbnb interface where, which I didn't include in the prompt. And now it says, first, let's create an HTML file for the main page. Okay, now we have an index.html. Now see, it's moving on to create the CSS file to style the Airbnb clone. And now it says, finally, let's create a simple JavaScript file to add some interactivity. Perfect. Oh, it also knows to add a readme file to explain the project. Isn't that wonderful? And once again, all of this is being done with just my one sentence prompt and a screenshot. And it generated an HTML, JS in CSS file, plus a readme markdown document. This is pretty intelligent and independent. So this is almost like a very easy way to give you a sense of what an AI agent is. Now let's just test it out. Let's open this HTML file. Wow. Wow, this is crazy. This is the Airbnb clone. And let's go back to the real Airbnb. This is the real Airbnb. And you see these pictures and these ones. I asked it to use open source image links to get some similar pictures. And the pricing is surprisingly almost the same, $2,140. Yeah, this is crazy. There's just only one image that's not showing up correctly. You know, the interactivity is here. I mean, since we're not building the backend yet, this is a pretty awesome clone of Airbnb. If you hover over, you can enter location here checking dates. Uh, okay, so this is this is pretty, pretty amazing. Now let's try a second test. What should we try? Mm, so this time we're not creating any clone. Okay, the next example I want to try is to create a simple one page website landing page for a business coach template and use open source image links whenever appropriate. After just three minutes, it has generated all these files, HTML, CSS, NJS, plus a Markdown README file. It's pretty impressive. Let's see the Markdown file. So it says it has created a complete one page business code landing page template with the following files, header, hero section features, about, services, testimonials, call to action, contact, and footer. Wow. Shall we see the result? Let's go with the open server. And here it is. Wow, can you believe it? This is a website build with one simple prompt. It even made up the name Elite Coach. So I just said business coach, but it came up with a company name Elite Coach. And then why choose Elite Business Coaching? 
and then a profile picture. Uh, apparently, this is what AI thinks a business code should look like. Again, this is, you know, I asked it to find open source image links, but it's a nice template. You can easily replace it with your own picture. And services with three tabs. It even highlighted the most popular one. Very interesting. In testimonials. Uh, these should all be fake as template, but instead of just random text, it gives you very realistic looking samples for you to work with. I think these are not going to link to anything. Okay, this one is linked to the bottom section of the page. It has the fake email, fake phone address, ah, sorry, sorry, fake phone number, and also fake address. I think these will just be links you'll have to fill in and not leading to any specific website. Yes, so these are not clickable right now, but you can easily replace those in a code with your actual LinkedIn profile. And wow, and also look at the footer, pretty professional looking. And guys, all of these are just after one simple prompt using Cursor and Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. Let's go back to Cursor. So it's really impressive. Let's say in the HTML page, and you can see these source of images. Now let's go back to the HTML code, move it to the very bottom, free business assessment. All these links, let's say the hashtag here, you can easily replace the hashtag with the actual link to your blog, to your case studies, and you can easily change this text. So this is a fantastic beginner business coach personal landing page where you can easily customize, even if you have very little coding knowledge. So I highly encourage you guys to give it a try. I mean, the service with all these codes can easily cost thousands of dollars in the past. Now, the third test I want to do with Cursor AI is very unique, which I recently learned. So you see, um, I am at the Anthropic website. This is their announcement article introducing Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. So supposedly I don't have time to read the whole article and then I want a graphic interface or just imagine you're the boss and you want your subordinate to generate a PowerPoint presentation with graphical representations, some kind of chart to help you understand what is going on. And now we can ask Cursor AI to do this for us. And this is how we do it. Please generate an SVG graph to help me understand this article's main points. I'm just gonna paste in the link and enter. It lists all the thinking process here. It knows what it needs to be doing and where it needs to read the article from. And I'll have to emphasize, if you're not familiar with SVG graph, these are code-based image representations. So these are not like PNGs in JPEGs, which are based on pixels. You can easily zoom in SVG files and it will not lose its quality. Wow. And this is the SVG graphical representation. It generated an HTML page, including this SVG file. It even has quick summaries listed underneath this graph. Pretty intelligent, I think. You should definitely try. I think this is going to be really useful in our daily work where we need to create PowerPoint presentations or just a nice graph we can easily modify to help us understand what an article is talking about. Nice. I mean, obviously, I, I think it would want this text to be below this graph, but overall, I think it did a pretty awesome job. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And we have done three tests with the AI agent cursor using Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. And we first created an Airbnb clone. And second, we created a personal landing page for a business coach. And number three, we learned how to ask AI agent to create SVG graphical representation based on a link to an article. So which one do you enjoy most? And what other ones you want me to try? 
or any questions you have, please comment down below. Thank you for watching.